This segment introduces you to some sources of economic data, particularly for the United States, that are easily accessible via the internet. And in one instance I'm going to show you is also very convenient to use because you can draw graphs, you can redefine variables pretty easily, and you can even download the data to do further analysis if you wish to. The first database that I want to show you is uh, put together by the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank and, it, and it's just called Fred. So if you Google Fred we could watch Fred go swimming but you can do that on your own time so what we'll do instead is go to the Fred economic database and what you can see is there's just an enormous amount of data up here. It is primarily data for the United States and I think that for the United States at least, there's probably more data than you're ever going to need, uh, at least for the purposes of principles of economics course. And so what I want to start with is looking at the uh, civilian unemployment rate. So you click on that, and what pops out immediately is the rate of unemployment, which we have defined in class, for the United States. This is a percentage and it plots it from 1948 until the most recent data, which is March of uh, 2012. So what Fred does for you is a couple of things. First, it accesses the data. It shows it to you in a nice, convenient form. And then it superimposes the data over these gray shaded areas. These are recessions. And in particular, what they denote is the leftmost part of this gray shaded area is the peak of the business cycle. So that's the point right before the economy started to turn down going into a recession. And the rightmost point in the, graded, in the gray area is the trough of the recession. So that's when the economy hit bottom and then started to come back up. So one thing that, that jumps out immediately when you look at this picture is there, this unemployment rate tends to move in a cycle. And this cycle is what's called the business cycle. Now, there are a couple of other things that show up here as well. We can learn something about that U.S. economy. You'll notice that in these early years, the unemployment rate tended to peak almost exactly at the trough. It doesn't exactly line up, but it's close. And in these instances, you know, some of them, it is exact. But then what's happened in the last three recessions? So this is the 91 recession, 2001, and then the most recent one, is that unemployment continued to rise even after the official end of the recession, and then reached a peak sometimes well after the official end of the recession. That happened in, in the 90s, it happened in the 2000s, and it's happened again. This phenomenon, which people refer to as the jobless recovery, is something that disturbs policymakers a great deal, and it's something that economists don't really yet have a good grasp of. Okay, now, one other thing that you can do, well, there are several other things you can do here. You, you can decide to edit this graph, and to edit the graph, you can, you know, you have the option of changing the time period over which you want to see this. This is now at the maximum. What I'm going to change instead is the frequency. So the unemployment rate comes out monthly. And because it comes out monthly, if you look at this graph, you'll see there are lots of little wiggles. So that's just kind of noise. And what you can do by changing the frequency, say going to quarterly, and here it's just going to average over three months and call it a quarter. We redraw this and now you get rid of a lot of those wiggles. Not every wiggle, but, but a lot of them. And so it's much smoother now and if you sort of squint your eyes a bit and stare at this, you can see the business cycle manifesting as rises and falls in the unemployment rate. Now if we were to go to an even coarser frequency annual, you'll see it even more clearly. Now it looks kind of funky because you only have one observation per year, but it's still this phenomenon that unemployment rises 
during a recession and falls after during the recovery is still quite apparent. So for now, let's go back to uh, quarterly. And what I'm going to do is add a, a data series to this. And the data series I'm going to add is the consumer price index. So I'm going to choose the one that is it's seasonally adjusted. This is for all urban consumers, so this includes a whole bunch of stuff. Sometimes people look at what's called core inflation, which nets out really volatile things like food and energy. I'm not going to do that for now. So I'll just add this. Now to be consistent with the with the frequency of the unemployment rate, we need to change it to quarterly. Now looked at this way, it doesn't really make sense to plot the level of prices against the unemployment rate because what's happening is anytime you have inflation, the level of prices is just going to rise. And you can see that, you know, there are some periods where it rises more quickly than others, and those are going to be periods where inflation is higher. But what we can do is transform this data, and we'll do that. And what I'm going to do is look at the percentage change from one quarter to that same quarter a year before. This is a particular definition of the inflation rate. And if we redraw it, now we see the unemployment rate's in blue, the inflation rate is in red. What happens? Well, you can see that when, economy, when the economy goes into a recession, inflation tends to fall. During a recovery, it tends to rise. And so, the, just as unemployment tends to rise going into a recession and fall coming out, what you see in these early decades is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. There's a tendency that when unemployment is rising, inflation is falling and vice versa. Now that relationship seems to hold reasonably well until you get to, say, the mid-70s. Now suddenly we have periods where unemployment is rising during this recession and at the same time inflation is rising. And then coming out of that recession, inflation fell, unemployment fell. So there appears to be the breakdown in this inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. And this relationship is what's called the Phillips curve, and we'll talk a lot about what might have caused this breakdown, what is it that generates this inverse relationship in the first place. As an aside, you can see that it seems to have, this inverse relationship seems to have recovered a bit in recent years. So here we have unemployment falling, inflation rising. During this recession, we had um, unemployment go up quite a lot, and inflation just fell out of bed. In fact, it became negative. So prices overall in the economy actually fell, which is not very common. It happened in this recession, and it happened a bit here in the mid-50s. But you can see over this whole period, prices didn't fall at all. Okay, so what can you do with this? Well, I mean, you can just stare at it and, and appreciate its beauty. Or you can say, I'm going to download this. And uh, you create a spreadsheet. Wish. So going back to the Internet, Federal Reserve Banks have an enormous amount of uh, useful information available and much of that is written for the general public so it's accessible to people who are not economists by training and so this Fred is an example of something that a Fed bank in St. Louis makes available to the public 